Hello to all our support fibromyalgia friends. This is a new interview series for fibromyalgia research in action. And we are welcoming a very special guest today, Sharon e Erdrich, right? Did I get that right? Erdrich, um, too close. <laughs> okay, I'm close. So she is a faculty of medicine and health at the University of Sydney, a trained nurse, experienced lecturer, and presenter with an extensive clinical background in the gut microbiome. Biome. We connected with Sharon regarding the fidget study where they're investigating digestion and the microbiome for fibromyalgia. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, thank you, Melissa. Now, uh, you are to broadcasting in from another location, so it was interesting to coordinate, but I'm so excited to like have you here and welcome you to our support fibro friends. Thank you. It's, it's great, great that we managed to, to connect up across the Pacific Ocean from one side to the other. Exactly. And I can't wait to learn more about the research that you are launching and going funding for. Before we dive into the details of the research, how did you get started with fibromyalgia research? Ah, it's quite a, quite a big question, really. So as you pointed out, I've got a history, a long history in health and also in lecturing. And I didn't know a lot about fibromyalgia. I'd learned about it. But then when I came to teach about it, I had to understand it. And it's hard to understand. And I kind of, when, I'm, when I was teaching conditions that we're always looking at what's the cause of something. And that was one of those that is an idiopathic. We, we don't know. And I would teach my students, we must be idiots if we can't figure this out, but it was, we're, it's an idiopathic condition. Um, and so, and, and it just seemed so prevalent. There seemed to be a lot of people that had it. I, as I, my awareness of it increased, I realized that uh, people are often stigmatized. If, they're told, if they have it or they, they tell their, their other people that they've got it because it's like this intangible, a bit like, you know, the way they used to treat IBS of, oh, there's nothing really wrong with you. Um, you're just, yeah, you know, what's the word? Yeah, um, just wanting sympathy or you're a malingerer or, you know, some of these really negative connotations. And I thought, no, that's not right. And then I came up, I, my professional journey took me into the world of the gut microbiome. So here in Auckland in New Zealand, I run a breath testing lab. And so I was diving deeply into understanding SIBO and breath testing. And in that journey, I discovered a publication from 2004. And in that publication, um, they had done lactulose hydrogen breath testing on a group of people who had IBS and compared it with a group of people who had fibromyalgia. And what they reported was that every single one of the people with fibromyalgia returned a positive test compared to about 84% of people with IBS and about 20% of healthy controls. And not only that, they also reported that the amount of gas that these people were producing that they were measuring on the breath testing was um, a linear relationship with the amount of pain these people were experiencing. So that was the beginning of my journey. There was something going on here and why had nobody picked up on that and followed it through? So that's where your focus is now. You're moving forward. You're following through on it. Um, does that bring us to the fidgets a study or was there more in between? Um, that pretty much brings us, well, I mean, at that time, I was, um, I was still doing my Master of Health Science and then the journey to find um, supervision to do this as part of a, a, a doctorate research project. I needed um, to have a university. So even though I'm, I live in Auckland, I managed to find somebody in the University of Sydney who was interested in my proposal and my study and said, yep, that looks like a go. And so now I've got a, a great team of supervisors across three universities in Australia. Um, the original plan had been to run the study in, Aust in Australia, but the way the world's been turned upside down in the last couple of years, um, I'm now running it out of Auckland in New Zealand. Yeah. No, it's, I'm glad. So this is where the funding, we'll get into that a little bit. Is there anything that you can share with our support fibro friends a little bit more about the research um, that you have? 
Okay, in terms of what, what I've done. So first of all, as part of my, my journey, I did um, what's known as a systematic review. In fact, I, I didn't do just one, I did two of them. So I tried to do just one. I, I, I was looking for research in which people that, that, that they'd looked at these three things together, the fibromyalgia, the gut dysfunction, and the microbiome. And there was no papers. There was nothing. So I had to split this into two systematic reviews. So I did one looking at fibromyalgia and the gut dysfunction. And I did a second systematic review looking at fibromyalgia and research where they'd looked at the, um, the microbiome or markers of it. And that in itself was a really um, interesting, uh, enlightening, shall we say. So in the examination of people's gut dysfunction. We, we, it's known out there, IBS and fibromyalgia. People go, oh yeah, you can almost expect somebody with fibromyalgia to have irritable bowel syndrome. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so they, um, the research that's available in terms of did they look really um, precisely at fibromyalgia, the definition of fibromyalgia and the definition on how they measured their, their, their gut dysfunction. So I opted to stick to papers in which the fibromyalgia diagnosis was by whatever was the established criteria at the time and um, the irritable bowel or other, I was actually really interested in beyond irritable bowel because irritable bowel is such a small subset of functional gastrointestinal disorders. There's a really big list of things that are um, associated with gut dysfunction that are considered functional. They don't really, again, know what's going on. And so I only found 14 studies that met those criteria. And over the years of research of knowing about gut and fibromyalgia and IBS, I thought that's actually not a lot of studies. Um, but there was quite a mixed bag um, in terms of like looking at the irritable bowel syndrome. Even sometimes they just go, oh, yes, they've got irritable bowel, but they wouldn't subtype it. So we know there's many different faces to irritable bowel syndrome. You can have constipation, you can have diarrhea, you can have mixed, you can have alternating. Um, and then there are, you know, even other types of, of bowel dis dysfunction associated with FGIDs or functional gastrointestinal disorders. So an interesting outcome of that study was, was there was one paper that was published by a Spanish group where they found that um, 98 out of 100, so they, they did 100 people with fibromyalgia, and 98% of them had at least one functional gastrointestinal disorder. And a lot of them had more than one. So I thought, okay, that's actually really good validation that this might be bigger than just irritable bowel for a lot of people. There's dyspepsia, there's probably um, some other dysfunctions that haven't really been explored. They did find that irritable bowel was more mixed and constipation predominant in people with fibromyalgia compared to the um, more uh, diarrhea types, which was interesting when I reflected on that sort of sentinel study that was part of my early journey because they measured hydrogen. And hydrogen, I had learned at that time re related to SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that hydrogen was more associated with diarrhea not constipation. So that's also, you know, it's a question that we, we don't know the answer to yet. So the second of those systematic reviews was looking at the research where um, investigators had examined aspects of the gut microbiome. And out of initial hit of, of over 4,000 studies, only 11 met our criteria for inclusion. So again, a very narrow range where they had actually diagnosed fibromyalgia properly. And there were four kind of groups of studies. So you can imagine over 11 papers looking at biomarkers or microbiome results, um, there 
is quite a big variety of things that's possible for them to have looked at. So there were papers that looked at Helicobacter pylori. There were some that looked at other gut bacteria. There was a couple of metabolomics papers. So that's metabolomics is where you're looking at not the bacteria themselves, but what their byproducts are, what the end product is, because that's also quite fascinating to me. Um, and also things like intestinal permeability, as well as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But there was actually only one or two papers from each of those categories. So with only one or two papers out of all of those categories, you can't really make any conclusions. You, and, and so that's what helped me design the fidget study. I'm just surprised by what you mentioned of just small amount of studies because we all talk about our gut and have because some form, like you hear either conversations of SIBO, H. pylori, just the IBS always mentioned in the diagnosis. So that's really intriguing that there's just very low amounts of research being done that you could find. Um, and for everybody out there too, we're going to be including links in the description to the study and ways to get more involved and participate as well. Um, but I know from my own experience too, I relate to all of this. Uh, I, you can't see it here, but I have a sign in front of me that says I have a very crabby stomach. So I've had <laughs> years of journey with gut health. So what you're doing is so important with the research and having these discussions, because we've been trying to do advocacy work to broaden the scope of research for fibromyalgia. So I'm so glad we connected and this adds to it um, even more. So that's why supporting you is important. Absolutely. And, and in the era that we are in, where um, science and medicine is finally realizing the key role that the gut has in just about everything else that is going on in the human body. So in the natural health world, that's been kind of a paradigm forever where naturopaths will always look at the gut first or pretty much, but medicine's taken a bit longer, you know, because it's harder to measure. It's been harder to measure, but we've got the science now. So with the, um, the, the fidget study, what we're planning to do is it's quite big. It's, it's we're hoping to recruit a hundred women with fibromyalgia and we want a hundred age matched controls, also female healthy women to compare them to. And we are planning to look at the gut microbiome. So I do have a sponsor. Well, it's not a sponsor. It's a collaborator for um, the gut microbiome testing. So Viome have um, partnered with me to offer and provide the gut microbiome testing, which is absolutely fantastic. So, and, and they are also quite fascinated with fibromyalgia as a condition and are really keen to try to unpack what's going on. So they've added some other tests to the gut microbiome testing. So along with the microbiome, we're going to be doing the oral microbiome, which now that's a whole other conversation oh, because wow. that feeds into okay. um, another piece of research that I have done. I haven't linked it to fibromyalgia yet, but I have linked something going on in the mouth with what's going on with, with SIBO breath testing. Um, and we can touch on that if we have time. But the, the, the uh, oral microbiome, the gut microbiome, we're going to be doing, um, it's, it's called metatranscriptonomics. Okay. So that, that's a big word. And what it means is we look at gene expression in people's blood. So we'll be able to go, okay, you've got this going on in your gut, and this is what your body is trying to do about that. This is what your genes are activating or deactivating um, with this in this picture. They also are really interested in the, the mold connection. So we'll be doing environmental swabs to see if, you know, fibro versus controls are exposed to mold um, and that, if that's a picture. And, and IgG. So there was a, a study that was just published really recently showing that it seems that there are antibodies in people with fibromyalgia that seem to attach to the nerves. And so we're a little fascinated with that as well. And um, if we can, we can add knowledge to that, that would be fantastic. So that's Viome. I'm just so stoked to have them as partners in my study. I also will be doing breath testing. So every person um, who is enrolled in the study, both the fibromyalgia and the controls, 
we'll have triple sugar breath test procedure that we will do a glucose challenge, we will do a lactulose challenge, and then we'll do a fructose challenge. So we're a little bit suspicious that we might see stuff with fructose that hasn't previously been explored. It's probably a better marker of a, of a distal SIBO, so the, the furthest part of the small intestine, because glucose only reaches the first couple of feet and then you've absorbed it all. So fructose may give us some different information there. So that's the breath testing. And, um, and then the, and then my clinic's kind of providing the resources for that. And the other testing that I'm having a little trouble getting support and funding for is the intestinal permeability testing. I want to do urine histamine testing. Oh. and some bloods to measure systemic acid, acidity and things like lactic acid, magnesium, and electrolytes. So at the moment, those are my kind of, my, my wish list in terms of funding for or partnership for getting those tests done as well so that I can complete my mission of doing everything that they looked at in all of those separate studies. That is, in, I'm getting so excited. I need to just donate my body to your research because you cover it all. I mean, I'm really fascinated by brain health and gut brain connection. So when you say even the oral biome, just how we have connections with that to cardiovascular health, brain health, what you mentioned with uh, glucose testing and all of that intrigues me. So I'm just so excited to have connected and stuff. Um, how can how can we get involved? Is this specific location wise only over you, or what's the best way to keep following the research? Okay, so um, the research is happening in New Zealand. Uh, my clinic is in Auckland. I'm not limiting my recruits to people who live in my city, but they do have to be able to come to it at least once in order to get all the preliminary um, stuff done. They can do the breath testing and, and the other sample collection at home. That's not a problem. Um, so how can people get involved? Well, I have got a website. It's called thefidgetstudy.com. And there's information about the study there and how people can, can share that with other people that they know that might have fibromyalgia. Um, and we'll be posting updates on there. So we haven't, we haven't started recruiting yet. We've got a couple of people busting at the bit to be involved, but I'm just waiting, um, waiting for all of my testing equipment to arrive from Viome. And then we're ready to hit the ground with um, recruitment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so I do have a crowdfunding page. So the crowdfunding page, um, it's probably better if we just share the link for that. It's, it's a Give a Little page, which is a crowdfunding site here in New Zealand. Um, I can show you, is it sensible for me to share the screen for the page? Yeah, you can share the screen and we'll definitely include all the links in the description and we'll post it for everyone to see. So there we go. Yeah, so there's the Give a Little page. It's called Let's Help Women with Fibromyalgia. Fantastic. So you can see uh, my target's $20,000, and I'm 10% of the way there, which is great, um, and it would be nice to get the other 90% of what we need in order to fund all the research that we're doing. So my plan at the moment is to, um, is to uh, collect the samples anyway, and then find a facility to store them until we've got funds to run the samples. So the, the crowdfunding can carry on. So the more people enroll in it um, or share and um, make other people aware, because every person with fibromyalgia is going to benefit as a result of this study, no matter where on the world you are. And even men will. So we're not including men because hormones affect your metatranscriptonomics. Hormones affect your gut microbiome. Um, hormones expect your, uh, affect your perception of pain. So that's why we're sticking to women, just to, to make sure that the data we get is as useful as it can possibly be. And who knows, maybe, maybe as a follow-up, we'll find a study that we can do with just men to see if there's something different going on with men. But at the moment, um, this is going to keep me busy analysing data for a very long time. So, of course, as well as all of those samples that we're collecting, we have, um, well, I have put together 
a bunch of um, validated questionnaires. So those validated questionnaires are based on the American College of Rheumatology 2016 um, fibromyalgia diagnostic criteria, which is a criteria that is designed for research. I have the questionnaires include the full Rome 4 functional gastrointestinal disorders um, questionnaire. We're doing a sleep quality survey. We're doing a headache symptom questionnaire. We're doing an oral health questionnaire, um, fibromyalgia, um, pain, uh, quality of life questionnaire, and the SF36, which is another um, kind of everyday quality of life questionnaire, and some diet information. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, is this going to be with the regular also input from Viome? Because I know they give you like some of those dietary changes and stuff too, or no? Like um, that's no, it'll out. all just get pulled and you know, num. Um, it's called machine learning these days. So you give a computer all of the data and it does clever things with it. And I'm really hopeful that those clever things um, save me having to look at numbers on spreadsheets for hours and hours on end because that doesn't excite me very much. <laughs> So is this similar to the raw data you can kind of get from 23andMe, but except yeah. it's with the microbiome? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So you'll, you'll be deep into the microbiome. And, uh -huh. but, I mean, it's interesting to see because we get so much information with like, take this probiotic, take this, but we don't. I mean, it's so diverse when we're talking about the microbiome. So it'd be interesting what you find. Yeah, and the microbiome is is such an interesting area of research. So the, and it's, it's expanding at a phenomenal rate. So, you know, whereas, you know, 20, 30 years ago, a culture was what we were doing. And then came, you know, PCR and moldy TOF, and now we've got um, metagenomics, but now we're moving beyond metagenomics. We've got the metatranscriptonomics. We've got the metabolomics, the, what the bacteria are doing, not necessarily who they are. You might have a completely different um, microbiome to another friend you have with, with fibromyalgia, but maybe what they're producing is similar. Mm. So the bugs themselves don't matter, but what they can do does matter. And that's where this next generation of testing um, can give us that level of information. And we've just, there's just, I've just been uh, participating. In fact, some of my oral microbiome research was um, showcased at the most just recent International Human Microbiome Consortium that was in Barcelona. And one of the researchers there, one of the presentations, um, said something that kind of blew my mind a little bit. So you know a little bit about 23andMe and you can get health data from that and that health data is associated with SNPs or mm -hmm. single nucleotide polymorphisms on your genes. Well, guess what? Bacteria have got SNPs too. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay, what are we doing with this microbiome information? Is who's there so important as what they can do? Yeah, and I think it's the what they can do. And are they doing it? Yeah, are they well, doing I'm it? Excited. Are they getting the substrates that they need? Are the other bugs around them giving them the signals that activate them or deactivate them? And what about the signals that we're giving them that activate them or deactivate them? So, you know, for example, we know that now that food cravings may be associated with the microbiome demanding to be fed. Mm -hmm. Specific yeah. nutrients. Yeah, it's fascinating. It is. It's really fascinating. So I'm glad we get a chance to connect. And I mean, we always welcome you back. I know our support fibro friends love hearing it. We're trying to make this accessible for the whole community to just support researchers and their work too and have an outreach component. Let's get you some recruitment patients and help you get funded for sure. That would be just so fabulous. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that um, it's one thing to have an idea to do a research project and, and it's another thing to get the funding for it. So when you are a big corporation or, uh, you know, a known and established researcher um, or associated with big pharma or, or big industry, it's really easy for them to fund their research and easy for them to get their grants to do so. 
But when you're um, a smaller player and just kind of entering this sort of big research space, this it's hard to make a make a ripple in the pond um, that people go, oh, well, actually, what you're doing um, could actually give us some really important information that that can maybe changes the way we consider and appreciate and manage these conditions going forward. I mean, fibromyalgia, I, I'm just always so shocked. It's just, there's so little known about it. The treatments for it are scant and not terribly effective. And mostly it's like, well, try these painkillers. And if that doesn't work, take an antidepressant. And I'm like, just, that is just so, um, so wrong as a way of, of, of supporting people in their health. So, yeah, I'm really hopeful that we can get all of the answers that we, um, we want. And, you know, even if we find that, that this isn't what the key problem is, we need to know that. Yeah. Great. We need to know that as well. Well, and I, again, it's back to this diverse research because we were doing advocacy on Capitol Hill and we're trying to unlock grants to figure out more pathophysiology of fibromyalgia or looking at, you know, with it, is it microbiome, biomarkers, gene, gene. So we're just trying to unlock that, but it's, it's good to connect with researchers directly because we know that we can help support you directly. We know that we're the, you know, what you're doing and have this transparency. So that's what I'm encouraging for our community as we move forward, because we need this research to happen. Yeah, it is so important and it's so exciting that you're excited to help um, fund my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we understand because we're a grassroots organization here yeah. with Support Fibromyalgia. So we know like those big grants, it's very girthy. How do you approach it? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's different. It's much easier for the complex, higher level companies mm -hmm. to get those. So we're on the same page with that. And just interesting, like talking about gut health and everything is important as well. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Even if we can it. improve that, that gut health aspect for people, that's a quality of life thing as well, right? Oh, yes, because it can be so intrusive on the gut health if you on either side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So we talk yeah. about that a lot sometimes. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't know, I, I guess most of um, the people who are, are listening here, there's been some research that revealed, and this was covered in my uh, my systematic review as well, where people that have fibromyalgia know or are aware that their pain is worse when their gut symptoms are worse. So that's a pretty compelling connection. If we improve the gut, we improve the pain. And I've seen this clinically as well with one of my first fibromyalgia patients that I ever treated in my, you know, when I, after I finished specializing as a, a, a gut um, directed clinician that, um, you know, her Cairo had sent her to me because the Cairo didn't think her pain was coming from her, you know, her, her skeleton or her posture or anything. And sure enough, it was, was her gut. And um, her pain scores went down by about 75% within six weeks of starting treatment. So we know we can make a difference when we address the thing that's upsetting the apple cart. Definitely. And I'm on that track. So I'm a believer in that because I noticed the correlation between gut health and brain fog too. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. So oh, I wish I, you were down here, Melissa. We could enroll <laughs> you in my study in a heartbeat. Do you feel like a holiday? <laughs> I know. If we could get out with all this traveling and stuff. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm sure there'd be people who'd be happy to come down here if they could. Um, and um, But it's also, I guess, a bit of an advantage for me that I did decide to move the study to run it from New Zealand. So originally I was going to run the study out of Sydney. Um, I had been going over to Australia every three months for two-week intensives, planning the study and doing all the background research. Um, but when COVID altered the way that we operate um, early last year, I rejigged my study and did my whole um, ethical board application all over. I had to start fresh and do it with the New Zealand um, Health and Disability Ethics Committee and um, get that across the line so that I could run the study here. But I'm actually quite glad that we're doing it here now because I'm not going to get held up by a border suddenly getting shut down or an outbreak affecting the way we do things. And also because we've had such low cases of COVID here in New Zealand, um, it means that that's not going to be an added confounder 
Hmm. Yeah. So yes, you have done of really having well. Having somebody on the study who's had COVID is quite low. Yeah. Yes, you've done really well <laughs> with those cases. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. I know we it, it was great to connect. So I'm so glad. And again, we welcome you back anytime for updates on anything you want to talk about um, or bring in other research that you want to talk about. You're always welcome here. Um, so thank you to all our support fibro friends for tuning in. And we'll have more updates on research. All the links are there. Please ask questions and chime in and we'll be happy to answer. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. And bye.